Hey guys, welcome to an episode of InRange. We're here at CQB Brutality 2024, and on the stage here we actually have a tourniquet application, but these tourniquets are particularly interesting. This is referred to as the Gaza tourniquet, and it is 3D printed and manufactured and stitchable and, manu and able to be made in areas that you normally couldn't manufacture what you would think of as a professional grade tourniquet. It was developed in 2017, put into mass production in 2018 in Gaza, and there are some modifications to it. It looks like a traditional cat tourniquet, but it's actually not. There's a little bit here that's been modified, and one of the modifications is specifically designed to allow it to be applied to smaller diameter limbs. And the reason for that is that a lot of modern professional tourniquets don't work on smaller limbs, such as children or even animals. And 50% of the casualties in Gaza, if not more, our children or animals. So a tourniquet that can be applied to anyone at any time is really a relevant design. And they're doing this with 3D printing and just stitching. In 2022, a batch of these was actually shipped to Ukraine as an act of solidarity. And what we're gonna do here is, since we just talked to you about this Gaza tourniquet, is we're gonna actually show you how to properly apply a tourniquet on this dummy we have right here, which is actually part of the stage. All right, so Bob is leaking here. So first, open the tourniquet. Apply it as high up on the limb as possible and then tighten it, not via the windlass, but via the strap. Wrap it around until the Velcro applies. The windlass now will be what actually stops the bleeding and causes occlusion. Then clip it into the clip, and ah, you're still going a little bit. Oh no, that's just what's left in the, in the limb. Yeah, I think that's... That's it. At that point, there's a good chance, by the way, the patient's going to be screaming in pain, not only from the wound, but also from applying the tourniquet because these things hurt and you want to stop them from trying to take it off. But that's a whole other topic for another day. All right, so you just saw a real rough job on how to apply a tourniquet properly. Do not consider that your training. You should really seek more. You could go to Stop the Bleed, which is a program here in the U.S. They teach you how to use tourniquets properly. It's a good project, a good organization, and something that everyone should know how to do. If you want to learn more about this, you can find about it at glia.org. I'll put a link in the description below. And it's interesting to note that tourniquets and data collection about tourniquets isn't something you see happening a lot in the field under stress. You'll see it in very sanitary environments, and they do... They're doing their little thing and they're checking out if they get proper occlusion and all that, but really it's not on someone who's screaming with a wound. And we don't have that here, of course, either. But we do have time stress. We have shooters running over here doing this on the clock. It's affecting their score. And the group here is doing a really cool thing and collecting data about how many turns did it take of the windlass to actually cause occlusion. Did the person actually achieve occlusion with the tourniquet? And taking that data set and giving it back to the manufacturers and designer to hopefully improve the product and save more lives. So I'm thankful for them doing that out here. It's a very interesting project. And again, if you want to see more, glia.org. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.